Well, we come today to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 18. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child. Actually, he was in his early teens. And it says he was girded with a linen ephod. Linen was a plain garment worn by someone who was dedicated to the service of the Lord. It's a good thing Samuel was. The high priest's sons were a disgrace. But God was raising up this young boy, Samuel, to do things the right way. Verse 19. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. This was actually a garment that was worn under the linen ephod. And, of course, young boys grow fast. So Samuel's mother made him a new coat which she brought him when she saw him once a year. His mother, if you will notice, is never seen complaining about what she did not have with her child, which was an awful lot. But instead of doing that, she just did what she could. And by my standards as a parent, it wasn't much. But she didn't complain. 20. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give you seed of this woman for the loan which is lent or given to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah, so that she conceived, and bore three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. God was good to Hannah because of her faithfulness to him. And as for Samuel, God was protecting him. In spite of being around the two wicked priests, he grew before the Lord. So the Bible says, which means that God was preparing him. Verse 22. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And it doesn't matter if these women worked in the tabernacle or were there to worship. This was a terrible sin. And if it's possible for fornication to have degrees of evil, this one would hit rock bottom because it was done by priests in a holy place. 23. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Spiritual leadership carries with it great responsibilities. These two priests were acting in a disgraceful manner and everyone knew about it. How dishonoring this, this was to God and how hurtful to God's people. 24. Know, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. In other words, you're making God's people abhorrent to the idea of worshiping him. Instead of kicking them out of the tabernacle, 
Eli gives his two sons a gentle little rebuke. He's pampering them instead of punishing them. 25. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all would repent. But these two continue to turn their back on God, and he reached the point of no return. Judgment is inevitable now. They didn't know it, but it was. 26. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. Notice how the Holy Spirit keeps mentioning this. Very important. Samuel was a spiritual bright spot. God noticed his faithfulness, and so did the people. You know what? You walk with the Lord, you are on fire with G for Jesus, and not only will God notice it, but others will notice it too. They'll take note of it, and those who love Jesus will be drawn to you. 27. And there came a man of God unto Eli, and the Holy Spirit didn't tell us who this man was, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of your father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And so Eli receives a direct message from God through a prophet. And the prophet, I should say God through the prophet, reminds him that it was the Lord who saved Israel out of a miserable existence down in Egypt. And it was the Lord who chose the tribe of Levi to be his priest in Israel. 28. And did I choose him, and that's talking about Aaron, out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me, and did I give unto the house of your father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? And so of the priestly tribe of Levi, God chose Aaron and his descendants to be the high priests. And that was the greatest honor God could pay anyone. And it came with a responsibility to be holy. Authority always comes with the responsibility to be holy. Which is why those in leadership, political leadership, for example, I don't care if they know it or not, they are accountable to God. And, for example, if you have a president who sanctions and promotes homosexuality and glories in it and revels in it, I don't care if he knows it or not. And I don't care what he says, and I don't care how many people applaud him. He's in trouble with God because along with authority comes a responsibility to be holy. Because you, whether you realize it or not, are in a position of influence. That is true for the President of the United States. It is true for anyone in authority. And it's also especially true for those in spiritual authority. 29. Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest your sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Eli's two sons robbed God of the portion of the offering that belonged to him. And when Eli did not stop them, by not stopping them, he put his ungodly, filthy, vile sons before God. It is always wrong to put the wishes of others before the will of God. That is making an idol of that person. 
30. Wherefore the Lord, God of Israel, said, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, Be it far from me. For them who honor me, I will honor. And they who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. God will remove the priesthood from Eli and his family because he knew about the sins of his sons, but he did not do anything to stop it. If you have to disappoint someone in order to please God, then it's a good idea to do that. Verse 31. Behold, the days come that I will cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house, that there shall not be an old man in your house. And you shall see an enemy in my habitation, in all the wealth which God shall give Israel. And there shall not be an old man in your house forever. Meaning God is going to kill Eli because of his sons and their sin and because of his sin for not restraining them, for putting them above God. There's going to be prosperity for Israel while young Samuel is the leader. But, but Eli's two sons will die young and they will not enjoy those good times. They chose sin. That's the good times that they wanted. Well, they made their choice, didn't they? 33. And the man of yours whom I shall not cut off from my altar shall be to consume your eyes and to grieve your heart and all the increase of your house shall die in the flower of their age. God will cause Eli to live long enough to see his sons die. Eli put them before God. Now he will lose them when God takes them. We want to be careful to remember that God is God and that we must not put anyone or anything before him because God is not going to tolerate that sort of thing. Not forever he won't. 34. And this shall be a sign unto you that shall come upon your two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas, in one day. They shall die, both of them. All of the prophecies about the extended family line of Eli eventually came to pass. And to prove that they would come to pass, God gave a short-term prophecy first. The death of his two sons will prove that God's long-term prophecy about his extended family will happen as well. 35. And I will raise me up a faithful priest who shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before my anointed forever. And this is actually a double prophecy. Samuel fulfilled it being a very good, very good high priest during his days. But it also speaks of Christ, who is the true everlasting high priest. Verse 36. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left in your house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and shall say, Put me, I pray you, into one of the priest's offices that I, may see, that I may eat a piece of bread. And this is talking about the descendants of Eli coming to Samuel for their physical needs to be met. And of course, it's also a picture of Christ, our high priest, who, as God, supplies all of our needs for as long as he wants us to live.